welcome to My Left Frying Pan, a live edition, our very first in the dark. It's eight o'clock at night. Oh my gosh, my really clock says it's eight o'clock instead of my, my taped My Left Frying Pan, which is always 420. Okay, so what am I doing with makeup on at eight o'clock at night? I even did my hair. I mean, I should be in my pajamas. Um, and no maquillage on at all, but I don't know. We just decided. We just, yay. We, yay. Okay. Oh, good. Hey, listen, I'm going to try to stream this too so that I can see the questions. Friend. Friend. Oh, there I am live. Okay, here, I'm going to play it. I'm going to watch it at the same time and then maybe I can, because Scott's doing the, he's trying to read the highs and I've all the muted. questions. And I, <laughs> I told him to stop saying the high things because when he was doing the high things, we missed the questions the last time. So yeah. Oh, look, there's me. Okay, good. Now, do you, are you, how do you see the questions, honey? Is anybody saying anything? I don't see Emma anything. He said, yay and friend. Okay, so I can't see that on this. So well, I look. I'm just now. no, but I'm just watching myself. But there's like there's no words. There's no word anyway. Whatever. Okay. Hi. All right. So I'm gonna answer some cooking questions that people have sent me in, and uh, we're gonna talk about the Olympics. And um, hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> and I may make a gin and tonic. Okay. Just we'll just see how the night starts off and ends up. Anyway. Okay. So. Um, if you like this new time at 8 o'clock at night, please tell us. Don't tell me now because when we up, upload it, all your comments disappear. So if you want to tell me later, then you can tell me. Okay? So, all right. First things first. Uh, oh, speaking of the Olympics. Love uh, the time. It's great being on 8. I'm loving a green tea gin and sounds better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yay, I found you. Oh, my. They're just going crazy. Okay, go. okay, they're going crazy. Okay, good. All right. Yay. Okay, so. Okay. I'm having some wine while watching. Oh, all right. I'm making a drink. Okay, forget this. Love all right. You. Hang on. I'm getting a drink. You've got to come with me. Honey, you got to come with me a little bit because I'm, I'm connected. Okay, so here. I've got the gin and the tonic. I'll bring it over here. I'm going to bring it over to the table, okay? All right. So, I went to an event at, uh, oh, i got to get the ice. i got to get the ice, honey. you got to come back with me. Okay, I gotta get a knife too. Hang on. I oh look, I've got no slippers on. All right, ice cubes. Here they are. Okay, oh these are like really snowy ice cubes. Here, I'm gonna put them in a, in a dish. Uh, anyway, I don't actually think I'm allowed to drink on camera, so I'll just make it, and then we'll see what. Oh gosh, there's all snow in there. Okay. Hmm. Slow. He says I'm moving too fast. All right, chug, now. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> Gonna get a knife here. Okay, so I was at an event at the um, the Royal York, the Fairmont Royal York, uh, uh, last week. No, two weeks ago. Uh, Scott and I went. It was uh, a new gin, and I'm like, I love local. And did you know that it was uh, Canadian Agricultural Day on t t Tuesday? Because I was flying home from. Uh, from Edmonton because I was in a I was in a black box competition. We'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, and uh, so I like all things local, and so you know, like local food, wonderful local produce, everything that we can do for thought. That is the most dried out lime. Um, I'm gonna make one for you too, honey. Oh my gosh, there's like no juice in this. This is like a whatever. Anyway, I like local alcohol too, and this is Dylan's. And they're from the Niagara Peninsula here in Ontario, and they came up with a, a special gin for the uh, for the Royal York, and and it's called the Fourteenth in Line. I'm just gonna eyeball this. Okay, that looks like about an ounce. That's about an ounce. Okay, uh, and it's got botanicals. They have like you know up on their their rooftop. Uh, of the Royal York, they have a garden up there, and so they use this is uh, their bitters. This is lime bitters, and um, there's a oh ice here it is. And uh, anyway, it's it's a really really good gin. So if you guys are drinking wine, I don't know why I ha I can't. So I'm gonna drink a gin and tonic. Anyway, okay, so we got a lot of questions uh, a couple weeks ago when I was cleaning out my freezer, and uh, one of them was I didn't actually have put out what the uh, how long fruit stays in the freezer so I fix that and I put I put it on the chart and basically you can freeze fruit like at least for a year but the thing is is that the quality starts going you said gin was a summer drink it is it, it who said that who says that it's true I, I hardly ever drink gin and tonics in the winter I usually drink whiskey but I got the new gin and it was really good oh yeah that's good cheers cheers to everybody 
Okay, so uh, gin is a gin is a summer drink. You, you you caught me, but you know what? It's new and it's good. Okay, so fruit. You can keep fruit in the freezer for about a year. And it's not that it's going to go bad, it's just that it dries out. So, you know, you really need to use uh, uh, like those really good freezer bags, okay? So that was the first one. Somebody asked me, why am I always telling you to keep the rack in the middle of the oven? And the reason is, is that the air wants to circulate evenly. So if you're baking on the bottom shelf or the bottom lower shelves, you're going to burn stuff. And if you're baking on the top, you're going to burn it on the top. So burn on the bottom, burn on top, no. So the, the rack has to be in the middle. Okay, let's get rid of that baby. All right. Oh, somebody asked me why unsalted butter has a shorter freezer life than salted butter or even salted butter in the fridge versus unsalted because salt is a preservative. And so the salt is going to keep the butter fresher longer, whether it's fresh in the refrigerator or frozen. Okay, next question. All right. Why do I always use unsalted everything? Okay, because the thing is, is that sodium and table salt are kind of different in the sense that in the world of packaged foods they put sodium in but in table salt there's iodine with the sodium and Canadians especially if you're not eating seafood or doing drinking dairy um, we don't necessarily get enough iodine if you're eating seafood on a regular basis and you're drinking milk on a regular basis you're probably going to be getting enough iodine never take an iodine, uh, an iodine supplement unless your doctor tells you but I'm really against that I'd rather you get the iodine from the food and so a little bit of table salt is a better idea than sea salt because it's not standardized and I don't even think kosher salt has, okay, when fruit has it in. What? Dries out in the freezer. Yeah. Can't you just and gets snowy. Can't you just thaw it out? Yeah, you can totally thaw it out. Or I oh, hang on, my bra's falling off. Um, but you can totally put it in a smoothie, or you can use it in a frozen state. But if it gets kind of dried out, you can thaw it out and bake with it. But it doesn't. It's not going to be thawed out and serve it on ice cream. It'll look like black okay uh that was the fruit one okay oh yeah somebody said hey do you actually wash your vegetables because uh, I'm, they, they see me washing my hands they see me washing i tell you to rinse things i i always wash my my vegetables so if it's like say it was a watermelon i would i would run it under the the, the tap i want to get rid of anybody's hands that have touched it you know any kind of those kinds of germs and also any kind of sprays and stuff so i wash everything that i'm going to cut if I, I'm not going to cut a banana, you know, like I peel it, so that would be different. Okay, somebody asked me about dried beans versus canned beans and was there a better bean, okay? So you can do your own beans from scratch for sure and it does take extra time. But now there's a couple of companies that have frozen beans and they're actually kind of the best in between. I have no problems with canned and salted beans and if I was a really, you know, I had a lot more time, I would totally be, be doing my beans in the crock pot, you know, soaking them overnight and then cooking them. But I really am not that organized so you can use frozen but I don't have a problem with canned. You're talking about vomit and omit and they're laughing out loud. What? It's got nothing to do with you. <laughs> what? I, I missed that. Okay, whatever. All right, so somebody said, how do you thaw bread? without it going all mushy inside. Okay, so the reason I think that, because that's never happened with me, but I think the reason is, is you might have had snow in the inside of the package, and so the Sorry, snow... Sorry, too much wine. <laughs> the joys of 8 o'clock at night. Okay, uh, back to my bread. All right, so if you've got snow inside of the bag, that means you've been opening and closing your freezer, and the temperature's fluctuated, and so the humidity is actually crystallized. It's very scientific. And so what I would do is that I would open the bread and dump all the ice crystals, the snow out, and then seal it up again and then thaw it out. And it shouldn't be soggy, but I don't know. Okay, so those are all the questions that people sent, and so that wasn't a ton. Um, so let's talk about the Olympics. Okay. I have been crying since the opening ceremonies. I mean, oh my God, I'm a mess because these kids, these kids, these adults, whoever, they are trying their best. Marty Michaels, if you're watching this, you better send me a note. How do you recommend de-icing a large freezer? Oh, de-ice, get, I'll get back to that in a minute. I'm talking about the Olympics right now. Hang on, think about that. De-icing, de-icing, de-icing a large freezer. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so the Olympics. Oh my gosh, because people are trying their best. Look, Eric and Megan are our pairs figure skaters here in Canada. They, they did their best. They were fantastic. They got a bronze medal. I am so I was weeping. The look of joy on her face. So um and, and listen at 8 30 on Facebook, they're gonna go live and, and answer your questions. And I, I bet you're they're gonna get a lot more than I got. But anyway, I'm a big fan of all things Olympics. I'm just a big fan of everybody trying their best. Team Canada all the way. Hockey, oh. yes. Yes. Oh, amazing. oh my gosh, we're just, oh, we're just so good. And I'm just so excited about this whole thing. So anyway, okay, de-icing a large freezer. Um, if you live in some place where it's really cold still, like maybe Edmonton, which I was just there. Oh, speaking of gold medals, um, I won the Alberta food fight. I was in a black box competition in Edmonton on Monday. Can real vanilla go bad? Shush! I'm in the middle of a big thank you speech. Just a minute. Where should you store potatoes? Okay, potatoes, potatoes and vanilla. Okay, hang on. I was in a food fight with a fantastic chef from Edmonton. His name is Chef Steve, and I called him, uh, what did I call him? I called him, uh, what's, that? what's that guy from Star Trek, honey? I called him, it starts with a B. What's that Star Trek guy? Bra. Uh, uh, oh, come on! Why can't you remember, Scott? What? I didn't watch Star Trek. You, you know, Buchacha, no. Chewbacca. Chewbacca, okay, Star so. Star Wars. Star Wars. Oh. Not even close. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't even had much of this. All right. Mm hmm. Steve Brochow, Brochu, amazing chef at Cartier, um, a restaurant in Edmonton. And we were in a black box competition and we had things like turkey bacon and ground pork and chicken and yogurt and eggs and cheese and- I watched your food fight, it was great. Oh, thank you, it was so scary. And I was, and I, I won, I won the golden fork. Congrats so I meddled, I meddled, thank you. Anyway, it was very exciting. All right, de-icing a large freezer. Buchacha. A buchacha, if you live in- if you live in Edmonton or something really cold right now, just take everything out and put it, you know, in a bag outside Congrats. and then get, then, then get a, like a wooden spoon or, or, you know, like the scrapers you use for your car and just scrape any snow that's in there. Um, if you don't have, it's not cold enough to put the stuff outside, then like put it into a, a when I've cleaned out my freezer down the basement, I'm eating out of it. You're doing and when a great all, job, Scott. Thanks, baby. When Except I'm, that is, he keeps freaking yelling at me when I'm doing stuff and I can't even like remember what the heck's going on. Okay, oh, so hang on. Is that a letterman? Oh, shh. Uh, anyway, so what I do is I we eat out of the freezer and then maybe around like April when it's like kind of down to the bottom, then I will take the rest of the food and put it in the basement sink. Rainy cover Nova it. Scotia. Cut, shush, Scott. You're doing a fantastic job, Scott. You're welcome. Maybe you should be on this side, honey. And then you cover it with a blanket, and then you get all the snow out and stuff, and then you put yes, all the stuff Yes, I'm back. wearing my love child underwear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you haven't watched the Valentine's Day special with him and me, you really need to see it, because he does, he shows his love child underwear. Honest to God, the guy makes me laugh. Okay, uh, potatoes. Where do you store potatoes? Cool, dark place. Cool, dark place. Don't put them beside the onions, because it accelerates the... The, uh, the deterioration. So cool, dark place away from everybody else. Vanilla, does, does pure vanilla extract go bad? It dehydrates. So it just gets some, um, it just, it, the alcohol evaporates. And so it doesn't go bad. It just gets stronger. So you don't really have to worry about that. Okay. Uh, anything else were we going to talk about? No, you that's it. Scott? <laughs> Did somebody ask that? Only of Maryland. <laughs> oh, here's my, here's my impersonation of Wickware. See, because he doesn't actually speak when we're in the house. I'm a mime. He's a mime. And and so lots of times I just have... The reason I talk so much is because I'm talking for two in people. In a void. And, and, and I live in a void. I live in a black hole of voidness. No, Where does vanilla come from? Vanilla comes from a vanilla bean pod. That's only grown in Madagascar. Well, no, it's actually grown in Mexico too. But in Madagascar, I think there was some kind of horrible something or other. I'm trying to find my vanilla beans that are in... Do you know what? I think I put them in the other cupboard. Yeah, they, they look like a... Is Scott like a big... also drinking? <laughs> no, but he will be. He wants to be. He, he certainly... I, I don't know where they are, but I was going to show you how to make your own vanilla extract. 
uh, is basically gin <laughs> and uh, or some kind of alcohol, vodka or gin, um, mostly vodka uh, with the vanilla bean. Anyway, oh, okay, so, cord. hmm, what? Are we over? No, your cord. Oh, what's wrong with it? You're pulling it. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Well, it's 8.15 and I don't have anything else to say. Do you have any say. chocolates left? Oh, no. I ate those. The purdies? Are you kidding me? I have a vanilla bean. Do they have an expiration date? No, but they dry out. So you, you want to cut them open and, um, and, and soak them in the alcohol so that you can get that vanilla bean Recipes flavor out. Recipes with booze. Recipe was booze. Although somebody did tell me, I posted on my Facebook page uh, about, uh, I'll show you my brownie picture. And somebody actually <laughs> sent a thing in and said, do you make them with uh, dope. dope? And I said, no, I don't. Because I don't. And so, as anyway. As soon as it becomes legal, look <laughs> As soon as it becomes legal, Scott's going to learn how to cook in the kitchen. How because, do you store vanilla beans? Uh, they, they usually come in a glass test tube and just keep them in the... Uh, in a cool dark place look look at this look at that brownie oh my goodness I made brownies for uh, for Valentine's Day we went actually to friends do you last have a night peanut butter cookie recipe yes I do it's there's one in um, if it's not healthy starts here yeah I think it's in healthy Salted starts here Himalayan caramels purries. oh those are the best man hang on have I disappeared I think I have here's healthy starts here I think there's a peanut butter cookie in here I can't remember. I've written seven cookbooks, and I'm just writing another one. I'm actually just editing it. And, uh, yeah, I think this is the one that's got the peanut butter recipe, peanut butter cookie recipe. Hey, you guys all should go to my website, MarilynSmith.com. I just redid it. It's got a facelift. And then if I have enough money, I'm thinking of getting a facelift myself. <laughs> peanut butter. No. There's no, oh yeah, peanut butter cookies. There's after school cookies uh, and a peanut butter cookie. So there you go. Where can I get your book? Uh, you can order it online. Um, you suit the color purple. <laughs> what is the focus of your new cookbook? Oh, I can't I love tell. Your oh, I, oh, thank you. I can't tell you what the focus of my new website, uh, but my new cookbook is because no one's done it yet. And if you give your answer to the ether, somebody will come up with it. It doesn't come out until May 2019. Um, but it's the best F-bomb thing I've ever written. It's so funny. I'm so proud of it. I'm still editing. It's, it's so exciting. It's healthy, obviously, because that's just the only thing that I ever do and the only thing I ever will do. And you know what? You know, like I, we were talking about this the other day. A lot of our friends, you know, in their 50s and 60s um, start realizing that, oh, my gosh, I haven't been eating right most of my life, and it's sort of catching up with me. So here's here's a cautionary tale is that, you know, start eating healthy as soon as you can, but it's never too late to start eating healthy. It is never too late because Homegrown. your body. Best cookbook around, love it. <laughs> Homegrown is a great is a great cookbook. I'm really proud of that. It's the only Canadian cookbook that uses Canadian ingredients only, and I'm so proud of that. I, I'm just so proud that we supported the farmers, which is why I gave a big is salute. Any hack appearing in your new cookbook? Sorry, what? In the honey, just admit it. You can't yell things out when I'm in the middle of something because they don't know what you're saying. Is Andy Hack in your new cookbook? Is Andy Hack in my new cookbook? No, she's not. But she is in an upcoming uh, episode. No, she was on the Valentine's Day one. Oh, and next week, uh, no, in two more weeks, we've got some more giveaways. Some really really exciting giveaways i'm so excited for all my subscribers so anyway okay i got nothing else um i got nothing i, I think we got to go watch the olympics because it's the men's singles right now and uh mm -hmm. you have a shepherd's pie recipe yes oh man somebody wanted to know if the leeds leafs <laughs> beat boston you know what we gotta go okay that's it we're done Oh, oh, we, are, the, we are so done. Sidebar, sidebar. So my husband is a fan of the Boston Bruins, and um, I'm a Canuck fan and a Boston Bruin fan, and we live in Toronto, so it's kind of ugly. We're going to the game in a couple of weeks, so you know if anyone's getting egged, it might be us. But anyway, I don't know what the score with the Toronto Boston game is right now. They're not, um, playing, tonight. They're not playing tonight. Well, why'd they ask? I don't get it. They're just teasing. Oh, they're just trying to bug you. You look gorgeous. <laughs> It's all about light, smoke and mirrors, okay? Anyway. Jill Harland. Oh. the Leaf Games. Go all the way. <laughs> is that Jill Harland? Is she, is she dissing no. me? No, no. Okay, all right. She said you look good in purple. Oh, oh, thank oh, you. Oh, said go Habs. 
<laughs> okay, Scott this is getting question. this is getting really ugly. Okay, we gotta go, and uh, maybe next time Scott will be on this side of the of the lens, and we can argue together as opposed to just hearing his voice in my you face. I'd love to see in your garden at this time of year. Oh, you know what? You really do. Okay, then we'll do a live one, but we can't do it in the dark. You wouldn't see anything. Anyway, okay, good Thanks thing. For this. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, it's everybody. Been fun. Peace, love, and fiber. Go see Megan. S see you next week. And Eric. And uh, Scott, stop talk. Oh yeah. Oh no, them. I thought you meant somebody else. Eight thirty. Go watch Megan and Eric on Facebook Live. Um, I'm a big fan of theirs. I'm gonna go over and watch and ask them questions. Hopefully, they answer mine. Okay. See ya. Peace, love, and fiber. I think we know how to turn this off, honey. Do you know how to turn it off? Nope. Nope. Okay. okay well. I'll do this. <laughs> No. Nope. No. Okay, it didn't work. I'm coming to the other side because obviously I'm the brains of the two of us. Okay. Here we go. <laughs>